Welcome to my channel. This time, I will be showing you solutions on how to determine resultant of concurrent force systems under engineering mechanics. But before that, please subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell after you watch this video. This time, I will show you how to solve this problem. Find the resultant of the concurrent force systems shown in the figure. We are asked to solve for its resultant. And to solve for that, we will be using the formula, resultant, denoted by R, is equal to the square root of the sum of the square of summation of the x and y components. If you noticed, we have four forces. The 100 pounds, 200 pounds, 150 pounds, and another 150 pounds. With this four forces, we will get the x and y components of each. But before we are going to proceed with that, I would like you to be familiarized with the direction of forces that is in your screen right now. We have the up to the right direction, the up the left direction, the down to the left, and finally, down to the right. I have indicated the positive and negative values of the x and y components of each of the directions. If you notice, the values of the x and y components varies with respect to the directions. Now, we will not stay long on these because I already had a video explaining this part. I would like you to visit the description box to know more about this direction of forces after you watch this video. Now, if you're familiar already with these, let us now proceed in our first step which is to solve for the x and y components of all forces. We begin solving the force 1, or the 100 pounds. If you noticed, its direction is going up to the left, and a while ago, you have seen that if we have this kind of direction, its x component is negative, and its y component is positive. With this, we can solve already for our x component, we have, negative 100 multiplied to cosine 30. We often use the cosine function if we are solving for the value of the x component. We simply solve and we have, negative 86.60 pounds as our x component. Next, for its y component, we have, positive 100 sine 30. We often use the sine function if we are solving for the value of the y component. We simply solve and we have a value for our y component of 50 pounds. That is now the solution for the x and y components of the force 1. Next, we proceed to our force 2, or the 150 pounds. If you notice, its direction is going down to the left direction. A while ago, you have seen that if we have this kind of direction, both the x and y component values of the force will be negative. With this, we can now solve for the x component. We have, negative 150 pound multiplied to cosine 60. We simply solve and the answer for our x component is negative 75 pounds. Next, for our y component, we have, negative 150 pounds sine 60. The answer is negative 129.90 pounds. That is now the solution for the x and y components of the force 2. Next, we proceed in our force 3 or the 150 pounds. If you noticed, we have a direction of going down to the right. A while ago, you have seen that this kind of direction has its x component to be positive and the y component to be negative. With this, we proceed solving the x component. We have, positive 150 pounds multiplied to cosine 60. The answer is 75 pounds. Next, we proceed in solving the y component. To solve for that, we have, negative 150 pounds sine 60. The answer is negative 129.90 pounds. Finally, we proceed in solving the x and y components of our force 4, or the 200 pounds. If you notice, its direction lies directly to the x-axis. So we will only have the value for our x component. In contrary, our y component is automatically zero. We have, our x component is the same as the value of 200 pounds. We have a positive value for the 200 pounds because it goes on the right direction. In contrary, it will be negative if it goes on the left direction. Now. 
the Y components is zero. After determining the values of the X and Y components of the forces, we get the total or the summation of all of it. We have our force 1 with its X component of negative 86.60 pounds and its Y component of 50 pounds. Our force 2, or 150 pounds, with its X component of negative 75 pounds, add Y component of negative 129.90 pounds. Third, our force 3 or 150 pounds with its X component of 75 pounds and Y component of negative 129.90 pounds. Finally, our last force. Its X component is 200 pounds and Y component of 0. Now, we get the summation and we have 113.4 pounds total for the X component. In determining the direction of X component, it's either going to the left or going to the right. If the value is positive, we have a going to the right direction. On the other side, if the value is negative, we have a going to the left direction. In our case, since we have a positive value for 113.4 pounds, we say that it is going to the right for the X component. Next, for the Y component, we have a summation value of negative 209.8 pounds. In determining the direction of the Y component, we only have two options, either going up or going down. If the value is positive, we have a going up direction, on the other side, a negative value gives us a going down direction. In our case, we have a negative value for our Y component that is why it is going down. We have to familiarize this directions because it will help us determine the directions of the resultant that we will be solving later on. After determining the values of the summation of the X and Y components, we will use this to solve now for the resultant. To solve for the resultant, we will use the formula, resultant is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the X and Y component. We already have a values for this so we just simply use direct substitution. And we have, resultant is equal to the square root of, the summation of X component which is 113.4 pounds square. Plus the summation of Y component of negative 209.8 pounds square. We simply solve and the answer for our resultant is 238.49 pounds. This time, we will use the direction that we determined a while ago for the X and Y component which is going down for the Y component, and going to the right for our X component. Now, the final answer for our resultant is 238.49 pounds going down to the right direction. However, we still don't know the inclination it makes with the X axis. To solve for that, we will be using the tangent function. Now tangent theta can be solved by getting the absolute value of the summation of Y component all over the summation of the X component. To solve for theta, or the angle, we divide both sides with the tangent. Giving us, theta is equal to cotangent multiplied to the absolute value of the summation of Y component all over the summation of the X component. Absolute value means that all our values must be in their positive forms. So we have, theta is equal to cotangent multiplied to the quotient of 209.8 pounds all over, 113.4 pounds. We simply solve and we have an angle for the resultant of 61.61 degrees. That is now the solution in solving the inclination or angle that a resultant makes with the x-axis. In here, we have a final answer for our problem of 238.49 pounds going down to the right at an angle of 61.61 degrees. If you want to watch more tutorials about engineering mechanics, please visit the description box. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell before you exit.